Welcome to the Trash Cats Trash Cast. I'm Richard. I'm Steven. And today, we're cutting through the misinformation. We're making a list of the fake news and we're checking it twice. <laughs> Who's the stranger on your rooftop? How'd he get down your chimney? If you don't have a chimney, did he just do a B&E? Is it an old jolly white man with a sack full of toys? No. <laughs> It's a conspiracy theory against your children to teach them to believe in magic and heathen fantasies so they fall limp to the hands of the church. And we won't let it stand any longer. No longer. God, Alex Jones would have fucking loved that. He would have loved that shit. You channeled it so well. <laughs> I feel like if you went a different path, you could have been a part of the info war. <laughs> the Trash Cats are the generals on the war on Christmas. Today we're talking about the... I, I, I want to think it's the moral obligation of do like do we tell do we talk about like uh teach kids about santa claus and like let them believe in this fantasy it's pretty- and let them think that like oh life's full of like joy and magic and then they get older and they're like and you're like oh actually no it just gets, it's it's all bad right it's uh the meta is pretty complicated instead of instead of getting cold they're gonna be shoveling coal Ooh. they believe all these christmas lies <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, man! This this will be dumb as fuck. I'm excited. Yeah, it'll be dumb. It'll be fun. How was your week? Um, it's actually been pretty good. Uh, I'm recovering pretty well. Back uh, from been the catching dead. up on uh, yeah, back from the dead. Uh, still <laughs> on my drugs. Uh, been catching up on some Boruto. Uh, I forgot how much I like that shit, and uh, oh, I'm a good man. couple years behind. So, <laughs> well, plenty of it to catch up on, huh? Yup. <laughs> perfect, perfect holiday season. Catching up on some ninja anime. Oh, shit. Well, uh, how, how you been? I just slammed half a sleeve of Ritz, some Suboxone, an orange. I have blood orange vape juice, and I found a disgusting old monster on the porch outside. So I am ready to go. Let me ask you this. I, 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 I know I don't, I don't think I should have to ask this, but I kind of feel like I do. Was it already open? No, no. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> it, it was untainted. It was sealed. It had some paw prints on it, but it was good. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, maybe that was like a like a piss monster. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. When you Couldn't make that. it inside the house, and you're like, well, I got this can right here. <laughs> <laughs> it just got cold sitting outside. So. <laughs> hey, there, there's leftover caffeine in that piss, I'm sure. <laughs> monster tastes terrible. <laughs> Have you heard that uh, comedian sketch about drinking her own urine because meth doesn't metabol- metabolize? No. You can drink and you can distill and drink your own urine if you're a meth addict. Pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess you could technically do it anyways, but you're saying the only reason that would make sense to do it is because you would get a buzz on it from the meth. Yeah, it doesn't break down. Oh, that's fucking wild. Yeah, that says something about how crazy. Dude, the Nazis with tank chocolate. Oh, it's so cool. Anyway, I'm a- I, I feel like that's still not as wild as Jankum. Yeah. That's some pretty fucked up shit. One of these- I was like a, like a, like a myth. I, I thought it was like an urban legend thing, and I was like, no, people do that shit. That's wild. Yep. That's some Kentucky, Indiana bullshit for sure. Man, I hate Christmas so much. I, I hate this <laughs> season so fucking much. I'm I'm excited to grinch it up and slay some reindeers with you. <laughs> um I you know I re- usually don't I don't mind the time of year. Um it's always usually more stressful. Yeah. Um I might also have a, a better perspective on it this year because uh or a better outlook on it because I don't have to work uh for Christmas mm. or like I don't, even like the surrounding weeks, I don't have to like go super hard doing a bunch of like catering and stuff, and so that makes it easier. Yeah, um, you don't. But have to. usually, as a as a general, like I like the holiday time of year, um, especially since I've been on my own and like away from Cincinnati. It's like time to catch up with family and stuff. And but the whole Christmas vibe is is it it doesn't. It doesn't need to be as wild as it is. Dude, yeah. It's just stressful. Like, I'm very depressive, but I, I, I've been good lately, right? Yeah. Christmas makes me want to kill myself. Like, Really? Yeah. Like, not not even like, uh, like, not super serious, but I just get so fucking stressed out about, mm-hmm. like, getting people things and, like, 
expectations and family. I just fucking hate it so much. Yeah, that that is a really that is a real thing. The the holiday blues kind of thing. Um, and I, I think it also falls in with you know the same time with um the seasonal affective disorder stuff too for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but but I feel like it's also like um there's a the common theme of getting uh like depressed on your birthday. I'm good for that one too. Yeah. It's like, like oh, that's such fuck. a weird thing. And like I don't know if it's like something like you just envision it going differently or like You're just another it's a it's just such a powerful reminder you're another year closer to death. Yeah. <laughs> Birthday, more like death day. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking edgy. <laughs> uh any honorable mentions? Uh I don't have any. I, I almost forgot. I'm so excited for this one. I yeah. mentioned it uh, our last episode. We're going to be playing some fresh fucking Christmas music. We got some trash wave Christmas music. This track is called Last Christmas by none other than Approaching Human. We're going to be Fuck playing yeah. that at the end of the episode, so stick around. This shit's so fucking crunchy. <laughs> it's so fucking good, John. <laughs> It should be played mandatory at every Christmas party. Uh, so, so let's let's cut right, right to the the to heart. Santa's of heart. Yes. So right, right into Santa's heart. <laughs> well, uh, well, first, let me ask you this: when, um, when did you realize that your childhood was a lie? Well, I'm smart, so <laughs> I I did figure it out early, and it was very awkward because I was like I. I don't know what actually is early, but I feel like I knew before other kids at school and it was like maybe first grade or something. And I called my parents out on it and I was like, like it did like little, little shatter, you know, little worldview shatter. And I was like, my parents are fucking liars. It's like, this is bullshit. I can, I sat them down and confronted them. I was like, I I don't believe it. There's no (laughs) way we didn't have a chimney. That was, that was the big. A Sherlock moment. There you go. Yeah. What about you? So, well, we did have a chimney. Um, so I, I didn't have that that one going for me. Um, so you you were also – you're the oldest sibling, right? Yeah. Um, so my older sister figured it out first. Mm. Um, I was probably around the same age as you, um, but she figured it out and then – She told you. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah she spilled the beans. Mm. Um, Mixed feelings. And I, I don't remember it being an earth, like a world shattering thing. I feel like I was like, could kind of see it already anyways. Um, And it was still like, but we still get presents, right? It's like, yeah. It's like, all right, okay. cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, I was for, I had the burden of knowledge, right? Because <laughs> you once you figure it out, you're the oldest kids at school don't know. Then you're told, like you've experienced your first lie. Your first yeah. big lie about the world from an authority figure, your parents, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have the burden of knowledge. And now you you can't tell anyone, and you're expected to uphold their lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, like, all joking aside, it is kind of fucked up. It's, it's really wild. If you change the context of it to anything else, it's really fucked up. Yeah, so uh, we're... We're going to definitely play around with it, but there, there's, there is something there. I feel like it's the first time, like, many kids are confronted with a lie about how the world is. Yeah. Um, I, I actually, I just remembered it was definitely, I knew going into, uh, Christmas and, uh, during first grade, because I remember a kid in my class that was talking about Christmas and I almost said something out loud to them and I thought, no. That's not I, – I shouldn't do that because that's, that's not what I'm supposed to do. That's which, <clears throat> one of the first moral quandaries you had to navigate. Yeah, that's that's the other thing is like that's such a weird thing for a, uh, uh, you know, a six-year-old kid to have to like go in and try to figure out like like making moral moral decisions because like other people withheld this information from you – and then you find out and then you realize that oh the the bit is that we we hold on to that information until they what figure it out on their own and then like what like are they supposed to like are you supposed to continue to feed them to believe it 
until they figure it out on their own. Yeah, and then you're you're sitting in class and you're writing a letter to Santa. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, <laughs> like boy, you're a sophomore in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I write them every year. <laughs> every year I tell Santa how much I love him. I never got that fucking Tonka truck. <laughs> That's not true. I had like three different Tonka trucks when I was a kid. Uh, dude, how cool would it be to ride a reindeer, though? Uh, that would be pretty sick. With some cowboy spurs? Let me say, reindeer? Fucking gorgeous animal. Yes. Fucking beautiful antlers on them. Big, wooly-looking uh, coats on them. Kick-ass-looking animal. So, a quick aside. I've been watching this outstanding new series on Netflix called... Uh, I think it's just, oh, fuck, Vior? It's the the French word for film. Uh, I think that's the name of it. V, V-O-I-R, Vior. Um, but it's just video essays about film from people in the industry, whether they're um, uh, artists of different sorts, directors, animators, and they tell their story about how film affected them. And they just cut, um, you know, quick cuts of different movies to, you know, tell the story that the person is uh, reading through, right? Right, right. And it is, like, some of the best writing advice I've, I've heard in a while. But um, one of the episodes did a little, just a little mini focus on the importance of deer in the background of certain film shoots. Oh, wow. Like when you see... It's very specific. It is. It was just a quick moment, but it was so interesting because they were, they were looking at, I think, The Crown or one of those stupid uh, English royalty shows or movies, and they were saying like... <laughs> My mom's going to feel personally attacked she likes The Crown. <laughs> I just... I can't do it. I can't do it. That's how uh, Rotten.com first became big, was publishing the photos of Prince Diana really i didn't know that they were they were actually uh faked photos someone uploaded and you could tell it was in the wrong country by the the 911 mm-hmm. phone number or whatever but it's still like rotten blew up overnight because of it and they like <clears throat> they became the beacon of at the time for uh free speech on the internet they had like a whole mission statement no one gave a fuck about but they just got famous for the princess diana photos but um, the deer, right? Yeah, so the deer. They were explaining the the importance between uh, a TV, a modern TV show, where you have tons of time to get into character depth and movies, and how every moment of a movie has to like farther the plot or like the texture of the character. Every moment is like more valuable, and they were showing mm-hmm. background shots of deer and how like the animators would have to make sure that deer has the exact right emotional effect on the viewer to farther the story. And it's very interesting if you look at like random, like, uh, cause they're always like CGI of deer in the background of movies mm-hmm. and shit. And like how important that like two like, seconds. Do they look startled? Do they look calm? Yeah. 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 I like that. That's really cool. I never, I never would have thought about something as, as subtle and simple as that, but. That's yeah, really fucking cool. I I enjoyed it quite a bit. I would love to ride a deer. I've touched one in the wild one time, but I would love to just clamber on up there and and their their horns are cancer. The big racks. Yeah, that's right. So cool. <laughs> fucking brutal. <laughs> so brutal. Um. So so let let's uh <laughs> let's talk about this too. Um. So Free telling the elves. children. Sorry, what? Free the elves. Yeah, free the elves. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking slave labor, sweatshops going on in the North Pole. Right. Yeah. Um, so telling children to believe in Santa Claus, or even yeah. like the Easter Bunny, or, or Jesus for that matter, hmm. is it wrong? Like, it, just like base, like yes or no, is it wrong to let children believe uh, that life is fun and fantasy while they're young? Honest, I... I think so i feel like if it was my own kid i just wouldn't want to lie right i don't think it's like immoral i just think it's 
bad. It's just like, unnecessary. Yeah. It's just like you can teach a kid that the world is magical or wonderful in other ways outside of lying about like some yeah. creepy alcoholic who gives you gifts once a year. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, uh, milk, air quotes, milk and cookies. Right. Um, the, the that's I was actually talking to my boss about it earlier today, and we were, I was saying, you know, I I really I don't I don't mind the idea of being like, hey, like this is a this goofy tradition that people do, and it's the story of this guy that you know brings presents and climbs down your chimneys and leaves presents, and that's why there's gifts at the bottom of the tree. But it's just you know, it's a traditional story thing. It's not real. It's just a fun game to kind of play. Yeah, I. Anyone who's listens to Joe, who has listened to Joe Rogan, I'm sure has heard the. Uh, there's this famous mushroom studier, and he had a whole theory that uh, Santa and many religions are based off of the psychedelic experience of mushrooms. <laughs> this is like, that's, ex- that's exactly the type of thing that I would expect that someone uh, who studies <laughs> mushrooms would say, but they, they it's re- all based on the mushrooms, man. But they it's really like do think like um, a lot of like pagan early religions. Well, yeah, yeah. Cause like, they had a lot of that in like Scandinavia and shit, you know, they were big into their fucking mushrooms and that's where a lot of like the weird Celtic and Germanic, Right. You know, origins of Santa Claus and Christmas really come from. They would get together for their pieces of the mushroom. That was communion. But the idea is Santa is uh, theorized or whatever that uh, it was a guy going house to house when everyone was snowed in and crawling through the chimney to deliver the mushrooms. That's fucking cool. It's a fun idea. You're fucking the dopest weed man ever. Yeah. Like the bo- dopest <laughs> plug you've ever had. He's fucking rain or shine, hail, sleet, snow. He's out there. Oh, my God. Dude, you just like. And he delivers. <laughs> you just jogged a little piece of trash out of my brain. I remember one time, this dude, all right, homeless dude, that like dealt for the other dudes on Vine Street, right? Like he was just mm. the, the carrier, right? Like, yeah. he wasn't the dude selling, but he just had the cash and the money, and he went to and from the street, right? This dude, one time, I'm waiting for him. He takes my money, walks down an alleyway. I hear a gun go off three times. He runs out, gives me the bag of dope, and leaves. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it was like, all right, dude. Like, you still gave me my shit. It was like, you still, you still got your <laughs> business as usual. Yeah. <laughs> Just never that's talk customer to- service right there. Dude, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a plug. Fuck Santa. <laughs> Fuck Santa. <laughs> His elves ain't doing shit. They're lazy you put, as fuck. You put Santa in that same situation. You ain't getting your fucking money or your drugs back. Fuck you ain't no. shit. <laughs> Send us some bunk shit all year. <laughs> oh, fucking off brand Xboxes. That it, fucking KFC gaming machine. <laughs> so I'll I'll jump in with with here it sounds I know we're joking, but I really do think re, like putting on like fantasy shit, uh like fake beliefs religion in general i think it's all a form of child abuse i think if you tell your kid there's a santa you're abusing your child go straight to jail don't collect your 200 dollars. <laughs> you're going to the santa jail i i definitely I, I i concur with the a forced religion is child abuse yeah um i definitely i think that um I mean, even even by the standards of people that believe in religion, there has to be a line of like, but you you have to acknowledge that the entire point of the religion is faith. It's based on the fact that you believe outside of what what is evident. You're you're going against what you know all logic stands for, and you're saying, well, I choose to believe this instead. So to force someone else to grow up believing. In that one weird thing that you believe in, contrary to all other evidence, that's child abuse. Yeah, I honestly I f- feel very strongly about it. Like I was, I had this conversation with my siblings recently, and like 
you know, I fucking love my parents, but we see things very differently, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they raised me to believe in God, all that shit. So, like, from my point of view, as as what I believe to be a reasonable adult, right? From my point of view, they they gave me a God and then took it away. Like, I, that's like robbing someone of something that is so so important or like so meaningful or changes their life so much like i was mm-hmm. explaining it to my younger sister who who is like a non-believer but casual kind of shows up for service kind of shit because uh, probably out of a feeling of obligation i honestly i don't think so with her she she's okay. the best she's my art therapy sister she i think it's more like a nostalgia thing like it, okay you know, for her it wasn't a negative experience i don't know if she actually believes in god or not but it you know she doesn't go often so it just i think reminds of her her of her childhood it's the familiar reinforces positive emotions and yeah and there's yeah. there's definitely spiritual value if you want there to be so for her it's a positive and trying to explain like from my point of view how much it feels like something was taken from me or like how betrayed i feel like to say like i feel like it is child abuse to my sister she's like what the fuck are you talking about like that's so stupid you know what i mean and Mm -hmm. like only people that like i don't know were had some form of faith instilled in them and went a different way can like feel that and your parents only did it because they fucking love you and they want you to believe in what will be best for you but they it it, i don't think it's a parent's place to you know like a parent has a lot of responsibilities but i feel like your spiritual destiny is something you should be able to determine for yourself yeah i even i even actually i i get the whole like when you get you know your kids involved when you're involved with the church at all like there's a built-in community there's a network yeah, we don't have resources and yeah. people that can, you know, be there to help you and, you know, uh, you know, people that you can help when, you know, when you can. It's like a like it's a network. So getting, you know, uh, introducing your kids just to that at a young age, I think is is it's always it's a helpful thing. Yeah. To, you know, like, hey, look, we, there's a whole community here of people that have all kinds of wealth of information they care and about different. You. Yeah. Um the the problem is then like if you introduce your kids to that and then say like the whole Jesus thing, like, you know, you take that with it however you will, but you know, but this is the community that we are, you know, these are our friends and our family and people that we care about and in our life before you came along kind of thing. And I get that. But when it comes to like, but also you have to believe in this God. See that that's the, the big moment is the, if you don't believe you're ostracized. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have this, you know, like modern civilization shit. Like you don't, there aren't like big community gatherings you go to regularly, regularly. There's not outside of like going to school. Like you don't have built in like social community structure. You don't have like necessarily groups of people that just care about you because you're a part of the group type thing. So yeah. it's like to, to give that, to someone you know at a young age and then as they grow find out it's conditional yeah because exactly. it's, it's you it's know not an unconditional love it is not and they will tell you it is but it is not exactly and to to lose that is i i don't know i don't i think it's not looked at as a traumatic experience or it's like thought like oh you know you made up your own mind or like i don't I, or that you're the one at fault, but I, I really think it's like a wrong to do that to a yeah. kid. I I got very lucky. Uh, with my parents. Um, I don't really even know how much of faith that they had. Um, particularly in my dad, I'm, I'm not really sure how much he had growing up mm-hmm. uh, when I was growing up. I'm pretty sure now he definitely swings more towards atheist. But I think he would agree that our on our uh, you and I both having the the agnostic without wanting to get the the weird um stigma of agnosticism it's just like uh atheist but what with the idea of like 
but who are you to – how right. the fuck do you know yeah, that yeah. there isn't some higher power that's not, you know, whatever? Right. I just, you know, I don't, we just don't think it's, you know, Christian Jesus. Yeah. Um, oily Josh. Um, <laughs> the uh, – I know my mom went to uh, Catholic school most of her life. Was that – Or most of her, you know, West school. Yeah, oh, yeah, we yeah. talked about this because her – Yeah, parent, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Might have gone to the same school. Yeah, yeah. She um, – and, like, all of her older sisters did, and uh, the house was a, you know, Catholic household. And um, But then, you know, when they had, like, family dinners and get-togethers, it was, like, n- no discussion of politics or religion. That was, like, a, a rule. Yeah. Um, And, like, she was raised that way, and I think that she even got – started to get burned on it when she was young um, based on, like – um, I think the story she told me was it was – they're talking about like unborn. If they're not baptized and they, they can't go to heaven or something. And, and then there's a girl in the class who's, uh, uh, the little brother had just been born, stillborn or something. Oh. And it was like, it's like, so you're saying that my little brother can't go to heaven? And they're like, well, yeah. And it's like, that's such a fucked up thing to say. Yeah. So, um, she, she started having, you know, doubts for sure by then. Um, but even, you know, even then, like when I, when I grew up, it was like, I only went to church with, um, with my cousins. Like, like I stayed the night over their house on like Saturday night and then Sunday morning we go to church. Other than that, I really didn't, uh, get into it. I, and they never forced anything on me about it. If anything, they, uh, you know, we had like Buddha shit around the house. Um, that's cool. We had, like, you know, different little artifact kind of, like, you know, uh, iconic uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? Iconography. Um, yeah, iconography, yeah. That, uh, you know, definitely helped push me into, like, hey, check out all this other shit, you know, and, then like, make your own opinion. Yeah. Man, so I – even before – either before or right about the same time, like – the the moral issues of running into santa as a kid like you know the church taught me like you die you go to heaven right right but if you kill yourself you don't get a go right but but you're always taught like how heaven is better than anything you could imagine on earth right like yeah so if you really believe as a kid like you're, you're basically telling a kid that this world is not as good as the place you will go when you die. Like, right. If you yeah. believe hard enough and you're a good person, you you would go to a place that blows this shithole out of the water. Like, Yeah, this place is a test of your will. Yeah, we're in some shithole country when we got sky heaven up there, you know? Yeah. Like, fuck this. So, like, it made me want to, like out of being a a true believer it's like well i need to kill myself or i have to die to get there but then it's like um, you know then there's shit in the bible like you kill yourself suicide can't go to heaven so you're like now now you're you're putting a kid in purgatory like there's there's no answer and then just like with um like saying someone's stillborn sibling doesn't get to go to heaven it's like the idea of like um like at a, a funeral for someone who's committed suicide, they're almost always going to be like, "Oh no, they still went to heaven," and it's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, like, get the fuck out of here!" Like you'll say whatever you you need to say about a stillbirth or a suicide to like make Keep it all people on kosher. the side. Yeah, yeah. There, that was another thing. Is um, I used to have conversations with somebody that would um, we would talk about. Um, so, like, say I die now. And I, you know, get to the afterlife and sure enough, the whole, the Bible's right and God's there and he's like, this is my son, Jesus, and I am God. <laughs> he's pretty cool. And, and and then I'm like, oh, well, obviously then I, I recognize you. I'm like, you know, sorry, I, was, I fucked up, man. Uh, you know, I didn't see much evidence on, on uh, your behalf there, but, uh, you know, obviously I recognize you now. And they're like, well, you'd still go to purgatory. Because you, if you, you know, if you didn't like commit yourself to God before you died, and it's like, all right, well, um, 
And I was like, so I'm just, I'm just stuck. I'm going to you know, go stay in purgatory then. Like, I don't have to go to hell. I can go to purgatory. <laughs> They're like, no, you know, you wouldn't be stuck in purgatory. Like eventually you could, you could go to heaven if you like repent. And it's like, so like it was just like a, a waiting game. Like no matter what, like as long as I get there and I'm like, I at least look and say like, I acknowledge that you're God. I can get into heaven now. Like eventually, like whatever it's not. Then why am I worried about hell? Like, it's just all, it's weird. Like, yeah, that like, it's, it's cool to just say, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. It's cool to just say like, oh, we don't really know what happens, <laughs> but be good. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, don't be a dick. <laughs> Better be you know, naughty or nice or Santa won't give you gifts this year. Yeah. Santa won't let you into heaven. Right. If you- <laughs> what if Santa really was like a saint and he was the, not... <laughs> Not Saint yeah, man, Nick. Saint Nick, yeah. No, but real Santa, like Rambo style Santa, and he's up oh, yeah. there guarding the pearly gates with his <laughs> reindeer army. You know, the North Pole is Jesus is uh, is heaven. Oh, dude, would and you- it's just it is just a sweatshop <laughs> for for dwarfs <laughs> for for little people. <laughs> the Elven Taskmasters <laughs> have you baking cookies and making toys from the seventies. Oh man, you're never gonna believe this fucking excerpt from the the New Testament from the or from, no from the Dead Sea Scrolls that never got transcribed. <laughs> we just found them. It turns out that the the heavens North Pole it's just a big sweatshop run by Santa Claus, <laughs> aka Jesus. God, I missed that chapter. I'll, honestly, I'm very excited about uh, starting to reread the Bible. It's been a while. It'll be a fun fun read. God, the Old Testament. God, it's such a little bitch. A little whiny bitch. <laughs> it's a little whiny bitch. <laughs> it's like, uh, I, 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 I brought you all into existence. I don't like you guys. <laughs> You're not fun anymore. <laughs> no one listens to me. Uh, sh- oh, once, when's the last time you ate a snowflake? Ooh, um, probably last year. It seems like some dumb shit I would do. Are you a big snow eater? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you dirty snow eater. Um, I used to. I, I think I, I feel like I've eaten at least, you know, caught a snowflake on my tongue like once every year. I feel like you got to, especially if you're yeah. like walking somewhere and it's coming down on you and just kind of like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me cop one right quick. <laughs> just a single drop of water, please. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's just what I needed. It's I know when we so were really young, we used to make uh, snow cones. Mm. S- scrape, scrape the snow off my, you know, someone's off car in the car. backyard, yeah. and like put it, and just, <laughs> just lick it in our hand, and just, it's a spit flavored snow cone. <laughs> this shit was the best though <laughs> and then someone's like mom in the neighborhood has like some chi- like syrup sauce to put on it and you're like oh, this yeah. is how ices are made <laughs> <laughs> do you ever see the uh the pictures of um melted snow like people people take the like they save it and then they they melt they have it like in a jug and it's like this is why you don't eat snow and it's just like it's oh, it's no. like all like dirt and like ash and like pollution <laughs> Disgusting. What kind of psychopath did that experiment? (laughs) It's probably some, probably some like science dad. (laughs) That's some science dad bullshit for sure. Like, look at all this car exhaust. Yeah, look at all this trash. All this, literally, all the pollution in the sky. It just picked it up on the way down. (laughs) Meanwhile, I got a belly full of snow and a tumor growing on my side. (laughs) Santa, why? That's how I got kidney stones. <laughs> so that dirty snow you ate. God damn it. Too much yellow snow. Oh, <laughs> the fucking yellow snow. <laughs> Do you remember the uh, fucking South Park game? That was your your <sighs> weapon. You were armed with snowballs. I and could you like it. hold the 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 attack button long enough, he'll like p- uh, piss on it and then throw it and it does more damage. Oh man, that's funny. It's fucking old school. Oh shit, dude. So what else is fucked? <laughs> <laughs> um well so so I guess what's the 
let, let's put this into perspective now. So like, okay, we're dialing you know, it in. You, you're you're grown, and then you go, and you have like all these. You know, you go to like family Christmas, right? Oh and yeah. You have your you know your nieces and nephews or like little little cousins or whatever, and you're like, you know, they're all excited to to stay up late and wait for Santa Claus, and you're like, hmm. So, like, what's the protocol? Do you, like, pull them aside, like, the sketchy older cousin mm. and tell them, like, hey, kid, man, I'll, guess what? I'll Go t- check your parents' closet <laughs> right now. <laughs> I bet there's gifts in there. You have to give me one, though. Yeah, you gotta give me your Xbox. <laughs> if, you get, if you get an Xbox, you have to give it to me. <laughs> Not gonna lie, the role of playing the sketchy but cool older cousin is a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, that's oh, a yeah, fun it's fun. role. <laughs> I don't know, I, um, man. I don't. I I kind of would feel like it's not my place to tell them unless I knew them very well. Like mm. for your niece and nephew, like if I was as cl- if I had a niece and nephew, I was as close with. Mm. I would feel more conflicted, but I I haven't had the experience of having to tell someone that trusted me because that's really what you're putting at risk. Like your relationship and trust, even if it's yeah. on a small level, it's a little cracked form in a relationship. Yeah, when they when they were really young, my, my niece and nephew, um, uh, the ones in Cincinnati, there they, I I definitely let it slip a couple times, um, and it was only because like I thought they in my head I didn't see them all that much, but they you know would converse back and forth with you like you know they're much older than they were. And, um, and it wasn't, wasn't like I was saying it to them, like, you know, like good thing Santa Claus is not real, <laughs> you know, like whatever the fuck it would just be like, I'd be in the other room and the, you know, down the hallway and like making a joke about, you know, Santa and the Easter bunny and Jesus or whatever. And then, uh, then realize they're like right there. And they're also like four or five years old. And it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know their stance on Santa Claus right now. Yeah, maybe if they got their beliefs in order, this would be a little easier. <laughs> yeah, maybe if they had their shit together, it wouldn't be my problem. Yeah, maybe, maybe if they made their fucking <laughs> podcast, yeah, they get, put their they, views. Start on. your own fucking podcast. <laughs> Just go to my niece and nephew now and say that. <laughs> hey, you think you're so big and tough? <laughs> <laughs> when he showed up, uh, your nephew, he's like, you guys don't have very many plays. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god damn it! That was so fucking funny. I was like proud because we. I was like, oh, these are cool numbers. This is way more than I was ever expected. Going big and, time. And and I, I was like, I was kind of on the sly about it. And I was like, oh, we got we got this many. He was like, that many. Like that's not. He started laughing. Like that's not a lot. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> Just because you watch fucking Minecraft videos and Fortnite, you know, oh, let's plays fuck. all day. I thought that was so funny, man. <laughs> oh, fucking little oh. dick. So, <laughs> all right, that I kid. got one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, all right, you mentioned uh, the family dinner rule of, like, not being able to talk about religion or politics at the dinner table, right? Yeah, yeah. I have very mixed feelings on that, but I want to tie it in with, like, the Christmas family get-togethers, right? Mm-hmm. That That's probably... That's probably my, outside of the religious reasons, like for practical reasons, that's what probably gives me the most stress and what I dislike the most, right? Like, right. I don't really like much of my external family, but like, I I still would like to see people from time to time, but I don't ever want to see any of them in a big group all at once, like twice a year. Like, yeah. <laughs> That is, and it's always it's always fucking uh, uh, Thanksgiving, and then three to four weeks later, <sighs> it's fucking Christmas. <laughs> so brutal! Like it's just the wrong way to like. <laughs> People are still pissed off about the arguments they got into in Thanksgiving. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man, but it's it's just like the wrong way to interact with anybody. I haven't gone to any family stuff in like it's going on four years now. I haven't seen it any extended family pretty much um 
but I've, you know, I have mixed feelings about that rule of like, don't talk about, you know, the touchy subjects at the dinner table or at, mm-hmm. with family or like. I think s- for them, it was just because they didn't, they, there was a rule that like the, the, you know, grandmother of the family, yeah. of course, so that it, it didn't erupt into a bunch of fights. Yeah. That's always a grandma yeah. rule. And that's, that's something my grandma kind of did too, but. I and I see how it can be a good thing, but I also I was speaking with someone recently and their their advice was like, hey, you know, don't make it stressful. You're just seeing people to catch up. It's okay to see things differently. You don't need to to bring up, you know, January sixth riots or yeah. <laughs> you know, different like shit. That's always crazy. I found out my uncle went to the riots. Oh, dope. He's a surgeon. He runs a hospital. He literally cool. runs a hospital, a major hospital. It's My, like, well, I read somewhere, um, like around Thanksgiving, they're like, I think, like, I just keep laughing when I think that somewhere, somewhere this week, um, some person is going to be uh, gloating about how they were. They were there, and they got inside the Capitol building, and they, <laughs> they never got caught. And then their, you know, their like, nieces like, and nephews are gonna turn them in fuck. the next fucking day. <laughs> fuck yeah! So, but I kind of like respect the idea of like we're breaking bread, don't bring up bullshit. But mm-hmm. I also i I more strongly feel like if I can't speak to my family about major issues or things we see differently are core beliefs such as religion like if we're gonna get together and eat a meal i see you a couple times a year and i can't express like any contention or like disagree on like major fundamental things in how we see the world then we're not that close and you're not my family right yeah no i i get that too I feel like I, I don't. It doesn't come up often for me, and usually if it's something that does come up, it's like a, like they say something that they misunderstand, and it's like no, actually that's no, that's not true. That's wrong, and then you explain it to them. They're like, oh, mm. um, but like especially about the religious stuff, there is a decent amount of my family in Cincinnati that's. Um, you know, still religious and they still go to church every now and then, or they still do the prayers and stuff. And, you know, they'll say the stuff to, you know, the kids and stuff or w- around the kids. And it's like, I don't, I don't say anything then. Yeah. Um, but then like me and, uh, me and my nephew had a heart to heart outside. Actually, uh, both of them were out there with me and we, I forget even how it came up, but it was something about school. Cause they go to Catholic school and it was like, Something about God, and, and I was like, <laughs> "It's like, well, you know, that that's only." I said, "That's only if you believe in God, though." And he was like, "Well, I don't, I'm not really sure that I believe in God." And I was like, "I don't, know. It's like, I don't blame you. I don't, you know, for whatever your reason for you know thinking that. That's that's whatever. But I tell you, like, you're not the only one in the family. But that's so small. But like, when you're a kid and you you're still figuring shit out to have one just one adult one family someone in your life to say like hey it's it's okay you feel that way and like to tell you like you're not fucked up for feeling or believing that is right it's so fucking huge yeah like i don't think i met a non-believer until like eighth grade you know what i mean mm-hmm. like Anyone that was positioned in my life told me to think a certain way. And, like, those first couple times you meet an adult or somebody who thinks differently, it's, like, it's it's just, like, a lifeline. Like, yeah, you, I, I, you might not even be aware of, like, how much that very small, minimal conversation may, like, greatly impact ease his psyche or whatever or, or sh- help shape his experience like yeah build up build up their confidence a little bit in themselves and their own thoughts and let them that encourages them to think on their own yeah more often 
Yeah, um, just slip a satanic Bible in their school desk, you know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to get, get him into LaVey. I'll, I'll give him, I'll give him the, the book you. of the law. Yes, <laughs> there we go. Give him some Crowley. A little Crowley for Christmas. <laughs> I think I think that was – I definitely knew enough about um, Christianity. Um, a lot of it like from like Black Sabbath and like Ozzy and stuff like that. It was like – because it's not even like that, like they're satanic and whatever, but they talk about like the mythos of, yeah. you know, the their themes are like within the mythos of like God and you know heaven and hell and stuff like that, and um, and I it was it's it's metal, you know, it can it can be really brutal. Fuck so, yeah, it's the most brutal. Yeah, so it's like not Ozzy um, the religion. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Randy cool. Rhodes did some ripping though. <laughs> you can talk all the shit shit you want about oh, Ozzy, but. No. <laughs> My motherfucker shredded. Um, the uh, the fuck was it? Oh, um, when I got older and I um, this was this is funny. So part of my religious experience growing up was um, uh, ICP because I got into them like right after they put out their uh, the Wraith Shangri La album, which is like where they reveal like we're all we were you know we're about God and the the Dark Carnival is God and is that you know was that want- the gospel album? <laughs> yeah yeah basically yeah was it really like, yeah no the, so like their you. whole thing is like you know um there's the six joker cards and at the end like the, the you know the carnival will reveal itself and this whole thing and then they got there and it was like That's they so released fun. a two-part a two-piece album um the wraith uh shangri-la and hell's pit and shangri-la was it's like paradise it's all about like when you get to heaven but it's you know your heaven is whatever you want it to be. It can be a fucking, you know, 24 seven carnival where like Fago comes out of your shower tap <laughs> and like, you Fuck know, yeah. you always, you know, you're fucking partying with like, you know, old fucking, you know, dead celebrities and shit and like whatever the fuck you want it to be. You don't even have hands. You just have hatchets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, I like that idea of it. Like being like, it's not about Christianity and whatever. It's like, you know, um, this idea that like, there's a, there's something afterlife and it's, you know, this fun, I, you know, it's whatever the fuck you want it to be. Yeah. And like, if that inspires you to be a good person during this life or to like be your best self, then sure. That's cool. Um, and then hell's pit is actually, that's still one of my favorite ICP albums. That's a, that's some real, they got a lot of brutal shit on that one. It's good. Oh, you're so goofy. I honestly, crooked preacher killers. Good (laughs) shit. (laughs) I'm going to have to give it, give some, some clown shit, uh, uh, an open-minded re-listen one of these that days. that album in particular yeah i see i was too intimidated by these weird clown children i would see as a kid <laughs> i was still like goody goody i was i was going to mass i didn't know what these evil clown kids are doing by the time i came or to understand i thought it was too late like i i missed that gap like i skipped the Black Sabbath, the ICP, and went straight to kill yourself black metal. I yeah. missed everything in between. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you when you uh, keep your kids away from brutal, wicked shit when they're growing up. Dude, that's the truth. Because then they get, they get, you know, they go in like real hard, and it's like you can't go that hard right off the bat. You got to chill, dog. You got to you got to work your way into it. <laughs> Classic pastor's daughter kind of vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my <laughs> Stephen, the uh, the uh, quintessential uh, pastor's daughter. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, so weird, man. I, my dad was the best. Like it, he was the the coolest principal I could ask for. But having your dad as your Catholic school principal at a Catholic school is it's just a fucking nightmare. Because you know, like it, the that that's, whole that's got to be awkward and, for him too. Oh, yeah. That's got to be so weird. I, he never would tell me the full extent, but I think, you know, he was principal at the grade school I was at for like eight years, uh, a couple years after I had graduated because um, my siblings were still there. And then he had a disagreement with the lead priest and eventually left. And I, I don't know the extent of, but I know part of that conversation at some point was about me. And, and I'm like, my dad would always have my fucking back, but it's there, especially when you, you're outwardly weird as fuck looking at that time. Like everyone's mm-hmm. eyes are on 
the atheist <laughs> principal's son, you know. Yeah. Sure. It was hard for him, too. It's like when, when they're uh, pulling you aside because you wore a black t-shirt in school. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Pretty fucked up, man. So goofy. Um. Oh, so the so, um, uh, back on the um, like uh, um, my my religious fostering. So like, what that turned into for me was like, I was like open minded about religion, and like believing in like whatever the fuck, um, to the point where I was just like, you know, your religion's your religion, like just, or you know, what you're you're eventually became, you know, like the afterlife and religion have n- have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. Um, only in the way that religion tries to explain it, but they don't fucking know. No. So, um, and that's when I was like, Oh, I don't have to believe in God. That's what part of it was like, I wanted to hold on to the, uh, the idea of like a cool something after we die. Like we don't just like, you know, your consciousness doesn't, doesn't just go to black and then you rot in the ground. And then, that's the end of your energy, your 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 personality, or something. I like to think I think it's a cool idea that something else happens after you die, you know, or there's some kind of experience to Fego. be involved in. Yeah, man, maybe Fego it's fucking fountains and juggalo bubble butts, right? Right, <laughs> <laughs> fucking juggalettes with the big titties. Yeah, let's go, <laughs> dude. I mean, just the idea of being able to to have, you know. A, a dream afterlife is e- even as a, a non-believer so appealing like it's so tempting like it feels like garden of eden like that is the fruit right like right it's the trick to fall for like it's so fun to imagine and play with but it's like such a it's such a simple but elegant trap to fool weak-minded people yeah and that's the other thing is like, it's like your heaven, it's not the same as my heaven. No. Like what I think it's going to be like in this fucking, um, like f- fucking Biggie small song. It's like, uh, um, f- fuck heaven. Uh, you know, like I want to, I want to tote guns and shoot dice and like smoke blunts and shit <laughs> and wear black Tims and black hoodies. And like, that's what I want to do. Like f- fuck sounds hanging glorious. in your heaven with the goody goodies. Right. That sounds glorious. It's like, yeah, that's, uh. That's what I want to do. I want to fucking do hood rat shit with my friends. Dude, all day. Trash. Just, <laughs> trash that's the afterlife. The, the big garbage dump in the sky. Just smoking with cigarettes and doing hood rat shit with my friends. <laughs> cigarettes. Oh, man. It really is like a trap, though. It sucks. It really sucks. Like, uh... I just wish things... Wish things could be different. But it's... I do find the idea of, like, the blinking out fade to black. Like, I know you've spoken before about, like, uh, some of your thoughts on, like, not not a soul, but that our vibrations still yeah, bring out. Yeah, frequency of some type or some kind of radiation or something. Something. I, I like the idea that I tend to, I tend to believe just the, the dirt nap, everything goes black and like there's something romantic about that too that's how i feel like i've yeah i've it's died just... uh, enough times that and came back enough <laughs> times like i have an idea of what it's like and it's like it's like when you <sighs> when you uh when you bend over at the waist and you <gasps> and you stand up real quick put your hands over your chest and they push you against the wall and you pass out yeah that orthostatic hypotension. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, just everything gets a little grainy and fade to black real quick. I and it's I, people have such strong like points of view on if that's even possible or if that's a good or bad thing. I think typically people think like, oh, just rotting in the ground, everything going black, like that's so bleak, that's so terrible. And it's like I don't know. Going to sleep is is really nice. Like you don't. Kn- yeah. It's when your consciousness is off. You don't know if it's even good or bad. It's just you're gone. It just is. Yeah. I, I think it is romantic. I, I think I. I don't think it's bleak. I think it's. I, I would say someone unimaginative. Unimaginative. 
Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's all it would be. You know, the all that afterlife would be is like it's your imagination, like whatever the fuck you want it to be, because we don't know. Yeah, and so like anything that you come up with besides that is like it's fantasy world shit that you're talking about. Exactly, and you know, I would really like it to be something more, but I feel like accepting that like when my eyes finally rest, you know, mine gets to go blank, like just fading into the abyss sounds like the ultimate sleep, just relaxing. And if when my eyes open, there's something I didn't expect that, that, you know, that would be the fucking miracle. That sounds amazing. And if there were, like, if there is a God, I fucking hate him. I don't think there is one. But if I blink my eyes open and there's something there, like, I I think there's no possible imaginable way any, like, real God or being, there's no way they would deny me. And not because I'm a good person. Just be, I can't believe there's... A, a malevolent creator of everything. Yeah, if there there isn't, it's if they're stupid. intelligent enough to create everything, to bring time itself to existence, to fruition, then why why would it? Why would that being also hold um, the the animalistic? Um, like such sm- small-minded um, views of morality, right? You know, um, it's it just it's see it's like it's so man-made. It's 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 yeah. That's the other part that fucks me up is like when they say like oh it's you know God made us in His image and gave us free will, but but He wants us to be like Him. It's like well, why didn't He make us like Him? Why, did, why didn't he make us all angels? Like, why? Yeah. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. If, even if God believed in me, I wouldn't believe in him. But I. <laughs> <laughs> I that's, like, that's funny because I, I tell people um, when we get like deep in the weeds at like the restaurant I'll, and like, I can tell someone's like falling out, I'll, I'll stop them and I'll say like, hey, hey, hey. Like we we got this. I don't even believe in God, but I believe in you right now. We're gonna make this happen. Dude. And that's that's a good line. I fucking love that vibe. That's what the state giant is all about. Just uh even if I don't believe in somebody, if I love them, it's like state giant. We're we're good. Stand yeah. tall, marble, you know, polished and strong. But like if if there I, I don't think it's possible, likely but I, I definitely acknowledge, like, it is a possible thing that uh, a creator of some sort exists. I don't think so. But if there is, I do know that God would know my heart. I, that's how I feel, like, where, like you said, with the, the you know, different funda- levels of funda- fundamentalist religion on, like, the where the finish line to get into heaven is at, like, depending on how strong they're accordance to scripture is like i i feel strongly if there ever was um a creator like they would know my heart i'm i wouldn't be worried about if i hit the right criteria you know right didn't didn't hit all the the points on the checklist to be vip but i think he'll let me slide you know right there's not there's not evil in your soul you're not intentionally being shitty just to be shitty because you think it's fun to be shitty Right, like, and I've definitely been shitty tons, but I don't, there's very, like, there's psychopaths exist and shit, but, like, even the few <clears throat> handful of psychos I've known that, like, just categorically were terrible people, like, only a very small fraction of, like, bad people are, like, truly, like, quote-unquote evil, right? Like, yeah. Most people, even if they're bad, they're just suffering and they don't know how to do better. Like they're right. they're lost. They, it, like even if if they realize that they're doing bad, even like if, even if they're that far that like they realize that like the they have these evil thoughts and evil whatever. Like there's a 
Just there's got to be a yeah. It's like and even if that's the case that like they both have these thoughts and they don't feel bad about it and they they enjoy knowing that it's wrong, then you know God made them that way. So yeah, that's when you get to um, into the debates on <laughs> the ethics of, of God and creation. Those are two big, real big pit pitfalls is, you know, cancer in children and pedophilia. Uh, you know, those kind of arguments put some holes in, in the bullshit pretty quick. That's for sure. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole, it's, um, the whole God of the gaps thing where it's like, yeah. You can you can just keep coming up with bullshit to fill in gaps and holes and stuff as, as if you want to, but it's not like like you're making things up though. You're going based on like what your personal thoughts are and what your your um, you know what what you were taught to believe. It's not like even things that are like necessarily in the Bible or not. It's just what you have come to understand when other people have addressed similar things in your community. Right. Your church community, and then they're, they're answered this way, so that's what you respond to it with. What do you think about um, angels? Uh, um, I mean, they're not real. They're like the the one creature I, I would be most inclined one the one fantasy creature I'd be most inclined to uh, to be real, like the con- conceptually. What is um. I think it's actually like the direct description from the Bible about like what oh yeah angels are is like really brutal. It's, uh, it's like wings, eyes everywhere. There's some great old depictions. They're like I don't want to give too much away, but watch Midnight Mass. All right, all right, dude. It's Hannibal tier content. It's right up there. But the angels have you know thousands of eyes. They're a mass of wings. They're like a demonic abomination of glory i feel like just touching an angel would be like like their skin is like velvet orgasms <laughs> like you just want to hug them and bathe in the dirty light <laughs> that's another one i, I always I, for, for that reason i do always i like the theory of uh, or the story of um like lucifer you know the, the angel yeah. outcast from heaven for you know for challenging god or whatever and it's like it's like he he literally stood up for you know the the creation for the the creation that he made and was saying that like no like this is the reason that they're like this right like that was his whole thing was like believing in humans yeah. yeah and it's like that's that's the god that you we should worship is the one that's like has faith in us right Lucifer not just wants the- us to have faith in them that's the that's you know, that's I think the the other fun thing if you if you twist around all of the, the <laughs> yes. verbiage of the Bible to make it like, like oh no 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 this this is the good guy, like look at all the people that this guy killed. Wait, that guy's an asshole. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Right. He's Lucifer like flooding the, the world brain. and shit. And yeah. Yeah. This one this one's here for us despite that. Lost everything. You know I bet. Uh... I bet Santa's that that the other angel that fell from heaven that day. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> Santa and Lucifer. <laughs> they're uh, they're twins, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Siamese twins <laughs> connected at the hip. Right, split as they fell through the clouds. Oh man, I would love to have a uh, some Siamese cats. That would be great. Some Siamese cats. <laughs> now, do you actually mean like Siamese uh, breed of cat or Siamese conjoined twins cat? Oh no, that sounds very bad. That uh, sounds I, like that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> sounds, all the eye drops, the different, <laughs> the, the litter box, the lifetime of medication, hospital bills, and the surgery, the barbecue sauce, everything. <laughs> <laughs> so much work. It would it would look real cute though. <laughs> no, they're such a beautiful breed though. Um, we've I've had two of them in my lifetime. Oh, um, you had them as a kid, right? Yeah, I had I had one when I was growing up. Um, his name was Sammy. Um, we called uh-huh. him uh, little uh, Sammy Miami Whitewater Kiki. Uh, That's his full name. funny. And he um, 
he disappeared one day. We're pretty sure someone picked him up out of the yard. Oh. Um, then uh, growing up, um, like right, right when I was like getting out of high school, um, I got a cat. Um, we, we we used to go in like um, Jack's over there on Glenway. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would go in there just to pet the animals and whatever, and then dip. And uh, we went in there one day just to do that, and there was this this gorgeous bright white little teeny kitten with the the brightest blue eyes and just little dark tips on her ears and on the tip of her tail and uh, on her, her little paws just the cutest little Siamese kitten and we looked at it and it was looking at us and we're like <laughs> oh, god damn it we're going home with this cat today um and we ended up getting it and we took it down to uh to florida uh for my dad and um and uh, we we named her Sammy as well. Um, but is that, that his cat still? Um, she did pass away, unfortunately. Oh, um, I know he got he has a new cat. Yeah, yeah, he's a new kitty now. Um, he uh, that cat was cool as fuck. She she like my cat didn't like anybody except for him, mm. and would like see his his van pull up. Like she, she was an outdoor cat, so she uh, she'd see his van pull up. And then, like, she'd come out and, like, clean herself off, make herself all nice and pretty and go over and, like, give him hugs and then give him kisses and stuff. And then, but she was fucking brutal hunter. <laughs> My cat's uh, developing the battle pouch, which I did not know was a thing. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's fucking so cool. To protect their vital organs, they have this little hangy belly pouch of, <laughs> like, it's just like fur, but it makes them look kind of fat. But some cats develop it. From their their old hunter DNA, the, the primordial pouch. Yeah, that's <laughs> dude. Yeah, uh, I I thought my cat was. I thought we were gonna have to put her on a diet for a minute, and I realized she was still going through growth spurts, and she was just getting that, and it was like, oh no, she's <laughs> she's very healthy. She's in good shape. She just has a little you know, a little extra skin, and I I tug on it and pinch it every now and then. <laughs> oh, of course, a little kangoo pouch. Yeah, a little kangoo pouch. <laughs> I feel like. Uh, I got her pudding pouch. <laughs> she keeps her pudding in there. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is God would be a dog person, but Satan would be a cat person, right? That's yeah. what we're getting at the heart of yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this issue, you know? So if you're a dog person, you're wrong. <laughs> basically. It, I feel like it's totally great if you're a dog and cat person. Yeah. But if you're just a dog person, you're probably a piece of shit. Yeah. As a I, I can I can work with that, yeah. Yeah. Now, what about um, what about gifts? Because I find it so stressful. You know, is it, like is it gifts or or uh, gifs? Either way, they're both <laughs> stressful. <laughs> Just depends on the situation, right? No, but it, it, do you ever have to do the pretend you bought people gifts <laughs> your poor thing? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Dude, that yeah. is the worst. I stopped. Um, I I still buy gifts for people, especially if like um, they ask for something in particular, which um, was a very foreign concept to me until I moved up to Michigan and I met um, my ex girlfriend's family and they um, like her mom like to this like she'll like we're still close so she'll ask me like I need a list I need what do you want for Christmas what do you, or what do you want for your birthday and it's like I thought the whole point was it was supposed to be like a surprise or it's supposed to be like a thing. Like if you like, I guess we did presents when I was a little kid. My parents got me presents, but as I got older, we did a lot more. Um, we did um, more of the um, like they, they give us like gift cards or like cash and stuff because it's like you know they we know what we want kind of thing or like we like I save money a lot sometimes and like I buy my own shit and um, and it's not that they didn't get us gifts in between then. Um, but that's kind of what it turned into or like clothes and stuff. Like I love getting clothes, like good, like some dope socks for fucking Christmas. I love it. Um, but the whole, the whole, like, this is what I want. This is what I expect for, you know, for Christmas, or this is what I want to get was such a weird concept to me. So now I had to make an Amazon wish list to give to them. Um, 
and and the other one was like I had to make sure that they gave me one too, and because she's done that in the past of like, hey, let me get a, a, a list of all the things you want. And I'm like, all right, cool. Well, let me get one from you. And I give one, I give her a list, and then I don't get anything back from her. I'll get like oh, two shit. or three things, and it's like, this doesn't make up for it all. The amount of shit that I know you're gonna get me, <laughs> like I know you're gonna like hook me the fuck up. Right. So so now I have this Amazon wish list for for them, and uh, and they made one for us. So that makes it a little bit easier. That helps. But still, sorry, I had to go piss in the sink real quick. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, um, but what I've been doing recently is I've been making, trying to make gifts. Um, last year, I did, uh, I had this great idea of starting the can and jar things, and I made. Uh, it was um, so good, dude. Oh, uh, man. I'm, I'm just not going to have time to this year, but I'll probably end up doing something, you know. Nope. I'll, Eventually, I'll, anyways, but, I'll get my hot sauce one way. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I'm making the hot sauce. Don't worry about that. I got the peppers. Are all are all pickled up? They're ready to go. Yes. Um, the uh, but seriously, it's the best hot sauce I've it's, ever. Had. I'm not going to be able to replicate that one from last year. I kind of figured, but that that was that, a that was a fluke that just turned out amazing. That is for real. That was the best tastiest but like good spice level best hot sauce of my life the best way i can describe it to people is it's like it was like the flavor profile of cholula but spicier and a little bit thicker like when i was doing landscaping with with my little homie will shouts out love you will uh we would do our landscaping work we get off work hit chipotle like once a week or whatever and we got in the habit of like like we would be start, we both wouldn't eat all day. We'd be hungry as fuck. It's like seven in the evening, and we wouldn't eat till we got home here, so we could put your hot sauce on it. That's what I'm talking about. Like we would, that's like, what's up. He would ask me ahead of time, be like, "Do you got any hot sauce left?" And you guys got some hot sauce on you, dog. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got the hookup. We're good for another week. <laughs> nice. The um. Yeah, that that one turned out amazing. I expected to be so much hotter. I had a um I had two Carolina Reapers, I had a um uh scorpion pepper Mm -hmm. and a ghost pepper in there. And two ghost peppers in there. And I thought for sure, like this is gonna be way too fucking hot. Um I mixed it with uh tomatoes and onions. Um hopefully let me let me get out some of the recipe here. So I took the peppers raw. Okay. And I took the um, the tomatoes and onions and I think I did green green or red bell pepper. Um and I roasted those in the oven and then put everything in a blender. Does the oven roast just give more does it bring the flavor out? Or yeah, is that, is yeah. Is that so bullshit th- though? No, no, that's real. So that's um what you're doing is you're caramelizing the sugars in it. That's why it like tar- starts to turn brown and break down. But you're it's caramelizing all- the sugars. It brings the – so think of like what's the difference between like boiled chicken versus roasted chicken? I, I believe – I fully believe – I know you you know, but I feel like isn't it all getting cooked like anyway? No, because I took that out of the blender and it was ready to go. Okay. That's why it was You unsure. can like okay. put it on okay. the stove and like reduce it down, but even then you're you're boiling it. You're simmering it. You're not – getting that caramelization out of it gotcha so by doing it with certain peppers or parts of it ahead of time you get all that extra good yeah. flavor gotcha. i didn't i didn't take the seeds out of the tomatoes or take the skin off i left that on there um that's a weird thing hmm. uh, that's some goofy french shit um i left in um i took out the seeds of one of the reaper peppers because the inside was looking a little goofy um, and I was worried about it being too hot, but it came out like it was like just the right spice level. It was so good. It was um, the perfect level. It was that this is still hot, but it isn't ruining my dining experience or overtaking the flavor of the food. Yeah. It was right on the line. So this one I'm going to make this year is going to be more vinegary. Um, cause okay. I pickled, I pickled the peppers ahead of time in, um, uh, rice vinegar and um, I'm going to I'll still do the tomatoes and onions and bell pepper and then uh, 
I'm going to test it. I have a lot more peppers this year, though. I have like 10 Carolina Reapers and I have um, 10 Scorpion Peppers and I have, I think, eight Black Habaneros. Yeah. Those are um, cool. So that's going to be it's going to be uh, a little bit hotter this year. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I know. See, I feel like making stuff for people can be by far the most meaningful gifts. But also, I know for me it was a poverty solution. Right. For, that's for, what it was at so first long. for me too. Yeah. It just and then I spent so much money on canning supplies last year. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're like this wasn't cheaper. Fuck. And more time. <laughs> But, like, it can be the most meaningful gifts, but it also, it feels like, it still feels like you're coming up short sometimes when you don't have the option to buy stuff. And that is right. a stressful feeling. Yeah. I, Especially when, when no matter how good you do at, like, getting cool gifts for people, you are, there's always, like, like I was saying, my, uh, my ex-girlfriend's mom, she fucking always blows me out of the fucking water. They're, they're the kind of people that, like, use all kinds of different wrapping paper for each thing. And yeah. then, like, they get way into holidays. It's, like, it's really sweet and adorable. It is, um, but it's stressful because they don't realize how much pressure that puts on everyone else. I don't think that they're doing anything wrong at all. But it it's still, like, I've, I've, it I thought that way with them at first. And then I realized that, like, no, they just do this. They, they don't expect it in return. This yeah. is just who they are. They, it makes them feel good too. Yeah. yeah, they they sent a um when I actually this was cool um so she worked for the post office and um uh, they like when I first started dating their daughter I talked about my my niece and nephew in Cincinnati and like you know um like it was the same year we started dating and they were going like back to school shopping and stuff and they got a bunch of stuff from my niece and nephew and they Damn. put it in. They put it like all these school supplies and like these cute little bags and stuff and then like put it in a box. And then instead of like taking it to the post office and then, you know, you pay for the shipping, they slapped the label on it. <laughs> she had all these different stamps and she like just littered the box with stamps. Damn. With like all these different cool, you know, stamps from her, you know, big giant fucking collection of them. Yeah. It's like it's that kind of shit. It's like, okay, so no one's competing with that. Right. It's like I'm not gonna bother. I'm not gonna try. It, I'm gonna I've, I'm gonna try to do sweet stuff and be nice to you and you know, do cool stuff for you, obviously, but I know I'm not gonna get there and I'm not gonna hold myself to it. <laughs> See, I I definitely have gotten better with it with age it, because part of it definitely is like uh one of the toxic elements of of pride, but like it is like an art to be a good gift receiver. Like it's, I, I to me that doesn't come naturally. Like yeah, it's that, that's also an awkward hard. thing. It's like it's hard when you don't have shit to give to anybody, and someone gives you something mean, meaningful. It's hard to just accept that and like be grateful without attaching negative feelings or like because you you want to make sure that it's conveyed that like you're grateful for it and you're thankful. And then, but then you also feel guilty because like you don't have anything to, to return. And, and that, that's another one I was coming to like realizing that like when I give something like that to somebody else, I don't expect them to, I never expect the return. That's so the if only someone else, way to go into yeah, it. Yeah. If someone else is, you know, doing it for, you know, because they expect to get something out of it. Fuck that person anyways. Yeah, you don't yeah. owe them your thanks. No. Fuck that person. So Cole. That, Cole's expensive these days too. Yeah, man. <laughs> I wanted to do that a couple of years ago. I wanted to get my nephew a big bag of coal for her <laughs> and, and give it to him as his Christmas gift and have him open it and be like, oh, this is all I got for you. And then, and then you know, later on, give him something else. But it is hard to receive sometimes though um i i keep joking to myself this year i could you know i I definitely didn't get crazy because i don't like the holiday and it feels like an obligation to get people stuff but i i like getting people like small nice things whatever but this is one of the first years i could where it was less of a struggle right like it still was hard this year but it was manageable and 
I, I keep joking to myself. I'm officially out of poverty when I can afford to get, <laughs> when I can afford to get the YouTube Premium and not have ads on my phone anymore. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you can get pop up blockers on the computer, but once you get the ads off your phone, you've officially made it in America today. <laughs> you did it. You know that's actually funny. I was talking about that at work today too. Um, you're talking about like all the. Um, the commercial part of it and like all the, the ads you get on your phone for like, you know, you, you say something out loud in a conversation and later on you see ads for it um, yeah. on your phone. And it's like, it's fucked. How much would you pay for a social media outlet that was like, as it had like, you know, was Facebook and, um, you know, LinkedIn or whatever. It had all the, the functions of that. But also was ad free, ethical, private, or ethical yeah, like and no, secure. N- no data mining and shit. Like they're not looking into your shit, whatever. But it's a social media outlet like that. It's like That's, I think five dollars a month is a very reasonable cost. Yeah. Uh, so Signal met some of that criteria for security. They're you know first you know great encrypted messaging app and they were pushed to make a full platform like their version of facebook and they decided not to but the money was there and uh members of the company in leadership roles really wanted that to happen they decided not to uh honestly dude that's what my brother john's doing like his the company he he had a startup it's probably been like eight years uh functional app uh it's it had previously only been for college students though and they're kind of shifting gears and in uh a weird phase like they're going their nonprofit status is about to go through but it is like an encrypted private ad free uh version of facebook i like that's it that's dope yeah it, it that's what how we got some of our first trash cast listens now so you said that's it like he made that app yeah, he oh, didn't. He did I not didn't, code it, but he made the app. Like that's wild. See, I didn't understand that when you were first telling me about it. I thought it was like something like that was like through their college or something. No. He, oh wow, that's they, actually fucking cool. He's hired developers and worked with coders across the world for the last eight years. To like vast sums of money have gone into it. It's um. He had he had opportunities to sell like to Google and stuff like early on for what would have been substantial amounts and he's decided not to because they've really stuck to their goal and intentions of the company because they their whole mission was to like be for college students and to to be the ethical route and it's a yeah. very difficult route but it's a, and that means it's something too world. if if Google's coming at you with money. You know, early on, especially that means that like they know you have something, something, yeah. And they they've done some really cool stuff, but it. I forget where I was going with this though. Um, I brought up the social media thing out of nowhere. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you're talking about uh phone stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the targeted advertising and shit. Yeah, like commercialism. Being, yeah, it's such a a money day. Just the whole the whole month of December. It's yeah. so just lobbied by corporate interest. Lobbying isn't always bad, but it's so just geared to like suck every dollar you, they can get out of you for a month. And you got those fucking people with the bells outside of Kroger. Oh, those stupid fucking poor people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need food. Oh, I need my, I need shelter. <laughs> No. Blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, blah blah blah. Get out of my grocery store lobby. No, it, I just hate the fucking bell. Uh, like honestly, I'm more inclined to give people money when it's not Christmas. Like yeah. the the I don't know it, around just, Christmas. I'm like I'm fucking broke. <laughs> I ain't got like, it yeah, to man, give. You and me too, man. I'm about to pull out a bucket and stand right next to you on the fucking side of the street. I'll be right here, dude. <laughs> Man, maybe, that, so, maybe someone's going to come through for us. <laughs> right. 
Man, that's one thing I I always that's one thing I managed never to resort to was the straight up sign on the side of the road. Yeah. I could I couldn't roll that way, man. That's a rough one. But I I knew I had you know homies that they they literally had shifts, and even if they had money, had a job, I knew dudes that on uh, Christmas Thanksgiving would fly their sign because you're you're cashing out that day. Yeah. Like, oh, they're not home with their family. Here's a, yeah. here's 20 bucks. And there's, and there's a lot of people that, that'll talk shit. Like, I, I forget who the fuck it was, but I saw somebody major on YouTube, like, last year, give the take. You know, it's not a rare take, but that giving to homeless people is, like, shitty. Like, you're enabling them. You're, you know, making, uh, like, co-signing their mm-hmm. ill. Dude, can, that shit mm-hmm. makes me feel furious yeah. man like people need help sometimes yeah. and if and if you know it takes a stupid fucking holiday to convince you to like try to help a person who's struggling like whatever bullshit excuse you need fuck it like yeah they, something my mom told me i think she said it was something she heard from somebody at work when i was young uh she said that they um they overheard a conversation. They were talking about like, oh, you know, don't give money to them because they're going to go out and buy drugs and booze and shit with it or whatever. And it's like, and someone else said, what you do when you give them money, that's between you and God. What they do with the money is between them and God. That's and fair. Like, yeah, I was like, that's that's a that's a fair way of looking at it. I like that. Yeah. It's like this is your conscience. This is something that you're doing. When you, I mean, the reason you do charitable things, I mean, in in addition to helping people, um, when if you're just giving someone like money, that's that's for you. You know, you don't know what they're going to go out and do with that. You don't know if they're actually homeless or not. You don't know because there's, you know, like you said, there's motherfuckers that go out there and fly signs because they know yeah, they're going to get. Job. Yeah, they can pull a hundred bucks a day. See, that's here's here's my kind of point of view on it is like if you're giving a person on the side of the road money right so it's snowy out it's the night before christmas yeah yeah you're getting you're getting off the 75 exit it's dark it's quiet there's a a homeless person with their sign you're the only car there and there's so much pressure to give them money right like Mm -hmm. that's a thing yeah. I'm not going to pretend it's not. Right. But like, let's say you got $20 in your wallet and you're, you're feeling the Christmas spirit. And you're like, fuck it. I'm just going to give them the money. The reality is, is that was the minimum thing you could do. Because it's not like you're getting out of your car. It's not like you're you're talking to them. Yeah, trying you're, to not, make sh- you're not letting them in your car to get them, like, right. warm them up and yeah, get them a hotel or whatever. and. Fuck no, it's yeah. it's a bare minimum. You're giving them the paper that you happen to have in your pocket because you want to help, but you don't want to do anything to yeah. help. And that's yeah. that's o that's totally okay. Yeah. But like the the thought behind it has to be that you're not helping them. You're giving them an opportunity to help themselves. Yeah. Right? Like, that's yeah. what charity it is. It's like, you're not actively helping people. I always, I just always fucking hated that. Like, that people that, especially people that had been through that, they're like, I was on the streets. I was fucking used and I had signs. And now that I'm together, I would never, never give to somebody in that position because they have to hit their own rock bottom and do it themselves. Like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. It's so bitter. Yeah, it's so bitter. Like you, you know, just because no one helped you like the way you maybe deserved or wanted to be helped doesn't mean like you don't try to give other people that chance. I, I, I there were so many times I felt like, like don't definitely don't get me wrong. I always had, always had you. I always had. Uh, my brother Sam, a handful of people that like I could go to, but when you're like fucked up and lost in it, it feels like no one's there. And I definitely didn't have um, like people, uh, community, or like individuals who had specifically gone through what I was going through. 
that like knew that specific problem, right? Right. So it's like harder to reach out to like just people that are like doing okay kind of thing. Yeah. And like it's not like definitely not my calling to like try to help uh people with those specific problems, but like I always would if I have the opportunity try to be the person I wish I could have reached out to when I was doing shitty, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't have a lot of answers type of thing, but I want to be like the person that has been through whatever they're going through and that they can't can reach out to or checks in now and again, you know? Here's actually I got a, a late late to the show honorable mention here. Right. Um so um my dad um You're, real quick. I will your dad's awesome. He was always just yeah. I, I don't know him that well, but he was always the cool dad. He was yeah. the chill, cool dad. S- super chill, dude. Super, super dope. He um, one year um in in Florida. I'm pretty sure I was up here already. I was definitely up here already. Um, but he was uh driving in the, in our in our neighborhood or whatever, and it was you know um around like the week before Thanksgiving or something. And he was either going to a job or just getting home from a job. And he saw this woman and I, I don't remember why he ended up stopping. I don't know if she needed, it looked like she needed help or something. So he pulled over and he, um, asked her like if she needed help. And she said she was going to Walmart and Walmart's like, like a good 20 minute drive from Uh, where they were. Yeah. So he he gets her down there and then takes her inside Walmart and like buys her like stuff to make Thanksgiving dinner for for her and I guess her son um her like a adult son who's I, I think he was like handicapped or something or he he lived with her and like that's what her whole thing was like she was going out that day to get stuff for Thanksgiving and right and like she definitely needed help but he bought her all these groceries and took her back home and um. It was one of those things that's like, it's one of those stories that you hear like, uh, you know, the YouTubers and shit do. Or local news. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some goofy shit like that where like people are doing it for cloud or something. And it's like, you know, he, you know, he just did it. He just saw an opportunity and he was like, "I, I can do this. I can take care of this person. I can do this. And it's like, that's, that's, you know. That's my dad, you know, like that's that was super proud moment for me. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's it's shit like that. It's like didn't have to be done, went way out of his way, you know, it's just super cool shit. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think about that story all the time. I have a <laughs> it's a d- different side of the coin but the same wa- wavelength. <laughs> 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 Someone stole Thanksgiving dinner from an old woman. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave it to me. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't here for or, or present for this story, but it was one my mom always tells about my dad. And as a kid, it stuck with me. Because, like, my dad, he's just a big softy, right? But, you know, when I was, like, a baby or, like, when he was younger, like, he was a pretty pretty fit dude like played sports uh would would he worked at uh 2020 the juvenile yeah uh, yeah 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 like worked in public schools and uh juvenile prison for a little while like he had been around the corner old price hill boy uh one time uh he had like a road rage incident where this dude was fucking with him on the road right and they end up pulling over like, it's about to be a fight. He pops his trunk, and he gets out a baseball bat. Because he thought, you know, this shit was about to go down, right? The other dude gets out, and a fight starts. <laughs> and apparently, my dad, like, talks him down. Like, standing off with a bat. And this dude starts, like, crying and starts telling him about like how fucked up his day was. Wait, and then so my wait, dad, your, your dad has the bat or the other guy has the bat? My dad had the bat. Okay, I'm just I'm just trying to visualize it. Okay. Yeah. So the dude starts crying and they like 
talk about this dude's day and like he had some fucked up shit going on. Then my dad took him out for ice cream. <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. <laughs> like that that's so cool. Like that's it's 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 it in I think in con uh, not in context, I, I think it it almost sounds like cheesy and cartoony, but like you think it's you so put cheesy. yourself in that context of like you're having a shitty day and you know you're you know at odds with somebody and then they're like, Hey, 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 do you want to get some ice cream? And you're like, Yeah, I want to yeah. get some ice cream. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> that would make everything better right now. <laughs> Dude, I can I just can relate to that feeling so much. I know I've had like random weird like public freakouts or like just days where I was just like totally falling, couldn't keep it together type of thing. And if you know, and you know, I'm sure it happened in other ways, but like somebody pulling me aside and be like, "Dude, let's just get some ice cream." Like a stranger, like that's that's cool as fuck. Yeah. I want yeah, absolutely. I want to get Homeless people ice creams. <laughs> <laughs> give, give a goth, give a goth a kitten. Give a goth a kitten. Give a homeless man an ice. Give a homeless person ice cream. Give a bum a cone. <laughs> give a bum a cone. <laughs> oh um, shit! That actually that, that, that also just made me think of um my um the the lashing out kind of thing in public or whatever during the um after I, I hurt my back my. Shouts out to my mom too for for helping me out, um, getting my shit together here. I think I I think I shouted her out in the last one, but if I didn't, you did. Uh, you know, definitely, I would not be as healed as I am now if it weren't for her. Um, and uh, she's trying to help me this whole way and like trying to like help me stand up a couple times. Like I was like I could not stand up on my own, and she's like trying to like help lift me, but I was so afraid of like. Like my, I would get to a certain point and like my body would spasm and lock up and I couldn't move except for like going down. And right. I didn't want to like fall on her and hurt her. And I would like lash out and yell, like, just, just get off of me, like get, like, go away. And like, and I, I had to apologize later. I was like, mom, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean it like that. And she was like, didn't even like register it as like taking something to take offense to. Right. That's, um, that's but it was like the whole thing of like, oh, fuck, I'm sorry, mom. Like, I didn't mean it. Like I, of course, thank you. I'm sorry I yelled at you, mom. <laughs> that's that's what moms are for. They're right. they're they're basically punching bags that will <laughs> hug you, right? Like like she didn't even register. That. She's used to it. She loves you the death. You know they don't even think about it. I like, dude, she, I have to do that knew, all the time. With my knew mom. I was in pain and not me. And I think she was. I think she definitely saw it before i even did like my frustration and like because yeah. she would even tell me like like you're gonna get you're gonna get better you're gonna get okay like don't don't worry about it like you're gonna get fine and like i was like making jokes about it at that point and then later on it was as a, it's proving how bad it is it's like that's when i started getting upset yeah pain brings out that animal reaction you yeah know? Dude, speaking of which, to your point, I bet Mrs. Claus would be a way better Santa than Santa. Um. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh, my God. She'd well, give way better gifts. She wouldn't drink all the milk. Right. <laughs> that strong milk Santa. That, 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 uh, that vodka <laughs> milk. <laughs> oh, dude, I remember at your place one time, you you made me my first white white Russian. Really? Yeah. And I don't know if I've had one since. I think my only white Russian in life was at at your place in Bryce Hill. Okay, cool. It was a good memory. Yeah, man, I like uh, I like those. <laughs> I'm only ever gonna have one white Russian. I'd Is like it, it to be at your place in Bryce Hill. <laughs> there are only two times where uh, uh, um, dairy beverage or dairy products should ever be anywhere near alcohol. Uh, three times. I'll say, say three times. One white Russian. Mm. Two eggnog yeah. and brandy. What about Bailey's? Bailey's is different. That's some holiday drunk vibes. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, so that's I think that's different in in itself because you're it's made already with the dairy, and then Double you dairy. add Bailey's. You're not adding Bailey's to more dairy. Well, you put Bailey's in your coffee or something, right? Uh, I'll I'll mix it with milk. 
I'll, cu- I'll cut <laughs> my fucked. Baileys with milk. <laughs> You're fucked, though. <laughs> Have you ever done the Baileys drunk where you just get drunk off, like, a gallon of Baileys? Like an Irish cream? No. <laughs> a mixer? <laughs> no mixer. Just, just a nice warm bottle of Baileys. <laughs> just- Dude, that's, my parents never had alcohol in the house, but every once in a while, like... For the holidays, somebody give him a bottle of Bailey's. So I'd find a warm, unopened <laughs> bottle of Bailey's in a cupboard somewhere. I'd just slurp it up. Um, just cream drunk. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> cream drunk. <laughs> the, the, the last one is uh, one that we found by accident. Um, Disarono and, and uh, heavy cream. I, I What's Disarono? Disarono is like it's a, it's a amaretto. It's an almond liqueur. Kind of tastes oh, like cherries. It's I've an Italian never, thing. Never had that. Oh my god, it's, it's fucking delicious. Probably never will. Yeah, I'm that's missing fair. Out on so many yummy booze. Yeah, I want to be a booze hat. <laughs> and and thus began <laughs> Stephen's <Mr>. alcoholism. <laughs> Mister Lee, the fucking shit winds ran <laughs> coming. Dude, it sucks. I think my last drink was like a four loco. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, bud. I oh, know. It was a good relapse, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I guess if you're going to relapse on anything, that's what you start with. It's like, <laughs> all right, fuck. <laughs> Had some good fentanyl bars, some Xanax, this, and a this four is how, loco. <laughs> this is how tonight's going to go, I guess. <laughs> Lost a couple of days, but it was worth it. <laughs> you what, have, it, it was did, no cream drunk, but it was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> My, um... Uh, um my ex girlfriend's mom. Uh, every she liked uh, rum chata. Um, uh, what's that rum? So it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That so like rum. So it's like spiced rum and no. um um like you don't you know what horchata is? No. Horchata is a Mexican. Um, oh, milk. Like cinnamon milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my, that shit is the bomb. But I hate spiced rum. So it's like it's. It's not just like I wouldn't milk. even say it's spiced rum. It's just it's liquor and so rum chata is is uh, alcohol in um, horchata, and Dude, it's good. It's really fucking good. How do you say it? Porchata. Horchata. Port. H O R. Okay, that H O R. Horchata. Dude, that stuff's my favorite, man. There's I that. would drink that sand milk all day. That's that's basically what it is, like sandy cinnamon. Sandy cinnamon milk. <laughs> <laughs> so good. The I one, hate the, rum. Rum's the, nasty. The one I've had wasn't sandy. It's um, got a silt. Maybe. From what I understand, like the real authentic stuff, like most of it's supposed well, to get what dissolved. I had doesn't have that. What's that? I mean, maybe what I had wasn't the authentic. I think shit. the uh, authentic. There's less of it, it but there's the, almost. I had, all- I had the Americanized white people horchata. <laughs> It was but, from a from a place that did a lot of closer to traditional Mexican stuff, but see, maybe that wouldn't they surprise have it me. better. But I'm used to it being like a a silty bottom. You can build- a, I like my horchata like I like my women. A nice <laughs> silty bottom. <laughs> no. I couldn't. I couldn't pass that. <laughs> Spicy as my rum. I hate rum though. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that either. I I can appreciate it as something to infuse flavors with. Um, okay. I learned that from a bartender friend of mine. Um, like we made a um, – I had a – my last um, fucking pop-up thing we did was uh, the breakfast for dinner thing. Dude, and it was a six-course – oh, my God. Dude. The, the, the drinks were so good. So we made a uh, – um, what the fuck was it? It was a uh, rum raisin, um, a rum raisin old fashioned. That's what it was. It was like a eight so course in- vegan breakfast for dinner. Yeah, right? it was fucking oh, so good. God. It was decadent as fuck. I served I served those people way too much food too. <laughs> I, I, my portion sizes were pretty big, uh, but you know you gotta do what you gotta do. But yeah. the the drinks the the. The drinks were so wild. We took uh, these golden raisins and we put them in the, the fucking uh, rum to soak, and they got all that flavor out of the raisins. Mm. And it's a mellowed out. It was almost like a wine. It's just so fucking good. Um, syrup. 
but it's like it's rum is just liquor made with sugar cane, so you can add almost any flavor to it, and it's going to pick it up. Is that what qualifies as a rum? Yeah, sugar so it's a uh, 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 liquor distilled from sugar cane. God, that sounds like something I'd love, but I, I've never had a rum I like. I, I love liquor. I just have never liked a rum. Yeah, um, it definitely gets you some odd fucked up, and it the hangover's always shitty. What, what What is Jack Daniels? Jack Daniels is Tennessee sour mash garbage. But it's not rum. What is, no, it's, tec- it's technically whiskey. Yes. Um, it's just... Uh, you that's don't like a- Jack? No, Jack Daniels is garbage. What What's the, the one uh, that has the honey flavored? That's like Jack Daniels, but it's the other they, they have makers? Hun- mm, the, Jack Daniels has one. I think Jim Beam has one, too. Mm. Now, Jim Beam is bourbon. Okay. Um, so all bourbons are whiskeys. Not all whiskeys are bourbons. Gotcha. Um, and I don't gotcha. I, I would be a terrible alcohol. Like... I'm an alcoholic, but I wasn't an active alcoholic because I wouldn't be able to stop drinking. Like, it couldn't have been my drug of choice because I would just be drunk all the fucking time. Yeah, I definitely had times <laughs> like that. <laughs> there was this time. There was, there was definitely a time when it was to a point where if it was any worse than it was or if it went on longer than it did, it would have been a problem. We could have been rehab buddies. Yeah, we could have been rehab buddies. Podcasting in prison. <laughs> I'm like pretty sure X-rated. You, we you smuggle were, out the tapes. You were getting out of rehab at that time, and I'm like walking through the front door, like, <laughs> ready to go back, ready to go in. Just wasted, like, look at these idiots. Oh, man. Ima- imagine the breaks. Imagine the- <laughs> Oh, Jesus. The, um, yeah, that's, um. Yeah, Jack Daniels is trash. It's disgusting. That shows how much uh, my my fine taste is. <laughs> now, now that's not to say like also Jack Daniels is you know it's not because it's cheap. I like Jim Beam. I like like some some Jim Beam Black, and that's only like twenty two dollars a bottle. I think they do the honey one. I really like. Yeah, yeah, they 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 have one that's good. Um, their flavored ones are are not bad either. They have like a uh, an apple, apple, the green apple one's pretty good. Yeah, I don't really fuck with the flavored shit like that usually, but uh, the yeah, others aren't bad. Hmm. Well, uh, favorite Christmas food? Oh, oh um, fuck so Christmas food. Every year, um, Elf I grew meat. I grew up thinking uh, lasagna was a traditional. In our family, it's traditional. <laughs> Christmas food. <laughs> That's awesome. We would make my mom would make lasagna every every Christmas. <laughs> That's That's some good stuff. Yeah. That's nice. And then, you know, we would do like I'm sure we probably also did ham and we also we hosted most Christmas and most holidays growing up. Um and we uh Yeah, with the, I'm sure we did a ham and I'm trying to think of what else we did for thanks or for Christmas. I want Chinese food this year. Oh, man, that sounds so fucking good. I just had some kit, dude. This new, it sounds ridiculous, but this new curry uh, place in Price Hill, is so, it's my favorite curry place. Really? Yeah. What's it called? Maya's. I think it's Maya's Palace. We gotta find Ch- out what Maya's Palace is, uh... Christmas right, hours are going to be. It's right across from a gas station on West 8th Street. And it is the best Indian food. Okay. There's some more authentic, like, traditional curry places. But this is, like, by far my favorite. Oh, I can tell you by looking at the menu. Let's find out. Garlic. Oh, I see. I see in the pictures already there's some Papa Doms in there. Oh, yeah. That's I what mean, the fuck I'm talking about. It's authentic, but apparently, like... A biryani... Like the super traditional style curry is is not quite as like smooth as like I, I, or or like the curry we're used to is a lot smoother than a true Indian traditional curry or slightly that different flavor may profile. Be true. I mean, the, the stuff I had over there was, like, the, the butter chicken I had over there was surprisingly very smooth. Mm. Like, I expected more texture, I think, out of the, 
the sauce, but it was just so creamy and rich. And, um, the, um, the doll stuff, um, usually you get more texture out of that. They, uh, like, they, they have a, a, uh, their rice section, but it's, it's, it's the biryani section. And that's another staple. You have to have that on a, a good Indian restaurant it has a whole section of their menu. It's just biryani. Mm. Um, interesting. God. Yeah. Anything but normal Christmas food. I hate the whole tree situation. <laughs> I, I fucking hate the music except this banging trash wave song we're going to play. Yeah. I fucking hate Christmas music. Um, what else sucks? The stores, the parking lot, everything. Yeah. I'm just so like, I, I, I really enjoyed this conversation and like the, like getting into like the themes and ideas around Christmas, but I hate the holiday season. I, I just feel like a Grinch. I just want it to be over. We're close. We're getting there. We're getting there. But fuck, like New Year's, I can get with New Year's. New Year's makes me a little sad, but it's still, it's a fresh start. There's the vibes different. Just got to get through Christmas. I got to look this up to, um, oh yeah, that was last year. So last year, um, I was going to say, just wait until, uh, the 20, 26th and it'll all be over with. And we'll have something else to worry about. And then I remembered, oh yeah, last year that happened. There was something to, everyone got really upset about right away. It was the fucking, um. The Nashville bombing on Christmas Day. I don't even remember that one. Man, there's a whole, uh, like a dude, like, detonated a, a bomb out in his oh, RV or trick. something. Oh, dude, that story was wild as fuck. Yeah. He had recorded countdowns and shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was a fun one. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun one. He was just spreading Christmas cheer, brother. <laughs> So uh, that that made uh that made sitting around the the TV watching the Christmas Day parade real fun and fuck yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get something interesting. Interrupt with breaking yeah, news that someone just <laughs> blew up a bomb in an RV. <laughs> uh, anything we want to say before we close? Um, yeah. Uh, fuck you, Jesus. Fuck you, Santa. Um. <laughs> And free anyone, the elves. Free the elves. Free the elves. Um, get your uh, get your pa- patriarchy off of uh, Mrs. Claus. Um, <laughs> if if you know somebody struggling this Christmas, just you don't gotta give money or even do shit. Just reach out. Yeah, it's good good advice. Yeah, it's always a like we said. It's a time of year where stresses kind of culminate for people. So. People are dying left and right, <laughs> and if and if you're having a uh, a rough time and you're just not feeling it or whatever, you know, send us an email. Uh, oh boy, <laughs> just reach you know, reach out to us. We we Make we are here angel. for you, and uh, we care about you because if you sat through this episode of this show or any of our episodes uh, up to this point, uh, you're probably pretty cool. So <laughs> we probably get along at least a little bit. That's legitimately true. Anybody could really could. Get our, our time anytime they want to email us. What is the email? Uh, trashcats, trashcast at gmail.com. Go. Um, all, all one word, no spaces, no dashes. Um, or, you know, of course, uh, we're on Instagram too. Instagram or Facebook. Yep. Leave some reviews. We need, we need help. We're slowly growing though. This has been, even if no one was listening, this is always so much fun to do. And it's been a very rewarding experience. And Hell yeah. Just been very awesome. rewarding for me because you do most of the work. <laughs> it's not true, but it it's only it's, fun. It's, you can say it's not true. It's true. You do all the editing. You've edited every episode. <laughs> Maybe it makes it sixty four, but it's only <laughs> fun because I get to hang out with my buddy. You know, that's what's up. That's what it's all about. Fuck yeah! So thanks again for listening, everybody. Thank you to Approaching Human for the use of his music. You can find his work on uh, SoundCloud at Approaching Dash Human. Yes. Also, after the show, we're gonna play uh, that new uh, Christmas Trash Wave song. Uh, the 
the titles Last Christmas, right? Yep, Last Christmas by Approaching Human. Check them out on the SoundCloud. And uh, this song's so fucking dope. <laughs> Uh, make sure to check out the show page at Trash Cats Trashcast on Instagram for news and art from the show. Uh, check out Facebook for the memes. If you're super bored, you can check out my trash yard on Instagram at Skyzix, S-K-Y-Z-A-C-X. Um, and yeah, shouts out to my brother, John. Love you, bro. Very excited to play this song. It's been so much fun listening to you create it. So glad you got it done and that we fucking finally got your music backed up on my hard drives. Goddamn right. <laughs> Tune in next Wednesday. For our, it'll be the first episode of the new year. No, we'll have a freestyle next, and then after that, it'll be. Uh, I'm not sure about that. That's going to be all for us today. Stay classy, eat trashy. Go fast, eat trash. And now, Last Christmas by Approaching Human.